Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join me for the dearly departed round 11 preview. We are going to have a look at the games in the Premier League for our five dearly departed teams. Who are they? They are the teams that I've covered in the championship before that have managed to get themselves promoted and indeed stayed there. We're talking Sheffield United and Aston Villa from the 18-19 season and from last season, Leeds, West Brom and Fulham. We're going to have a look at their games this weekend. There should be five, but there's only going to be four. Before we get to that, we just need to say thank you to Jay Coyle, our dearly departed fan sponsor. Uh, dearly departed, also known as Ben, couldn't bear to lose us. Thank you, Jay. He sponsors each and every one of these dearly departed shows. And I couldn't do it without the support of you guys. So with that being said, please hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't done so already. Now, I mentioned that there should be five fixtures, but we're only going to get four because look at the top there. Aston Villa versus Newcastle postponed. We'll talk about that in a second. The other Premier League fixtures, Burnley versus Everton. Manchester City versus Fulham is our next dearly departed game. West Ham versus Manchester United. Then Saturday night, a big one. We do that on the watch along. Uh, Chelsea versus Leeds United. Then into Sunday, West Brom versus Palace is another dearly departed game. And the final one, we're going to be all done and tucked up by um, Sunday afternoon. Sheffield United versus Leicester. Again, that will be a watch along on the channel. So you can join me this round for Leeds and Sheffield United's game. We then have Spurs versus Arsenal, Liverpool versus Wolves and Brighton versus Southampton going through the rest of Sunday and Monday night. So it's going to be a big game week, two watch-alongs, like I said. Um, I do try and rotate as evenly as I can covering these teams. So hopefully I get to watch all of them as we go round and round through the season, and certainly all of the derbies between two of the dearly departed teams. Uh, so Villa and Newcastle has been postponed um, during this this week, I think it's a couple of days ago now, uh, because of COVID issues up at Newcastle. You saw there, this is the Premier League statement, following a board meeting, Newcastle Villa, due to be played Friday night, has been postponed. Um, Look, I don't think they'd have got it done anyway, but I guess it expedited things a little bit more. It was actually due to be the first game of the weekend. Um, Newcastle lodged a request with the Premier League to rearrange the game following significant increase in COVID-19 cases at the club. This resulted in Public Health England uh, advising their training facilities would be closed down. Premier League board as a consequence. The club are unable to train adequately and safely prepare for the match. On Friday, in consultation with Newcastle and Villa, following extensive consultation with Public Health England and Premier League medical advisors with the health of players and staff, the priority. So the game postponed. Um, look, we it feels like we're getting close to um, the light at the end of the tunnel with this whole thing. Um, the footballers have done incredible to continue right the way through and uh, with the testing and the low number of cases and the fact that not many players have underlying um, issues and they're obviously all of a very good age and have incredible immune systems due to their status as elite athletes. We haven't had, um, have we had any postponements? Is this the first one? I think so. Look, um, obviously... It's annoying if you're a fan of one of those teams, you wanted to watch the game. But given how close we are now, how rare this has been happening um, and the safety issues, it is what it is. And uh, Villa will now be going to two games behind everybody. Remember, Villa missed the early, uh, the very first game of the season, wasn't it? Against Manchester City because of the short pre-season and the fact that Man City were in European competition after the Premier League had indeed finished. So they are going to be looking at um, two games behind everybody. Um, the caveat is, though, that Ross Barkley will be able to train and be ready for 
the next game. So they'll only miss him for one game. In Villa's last game, we did it as a watch-along. Uh, they should have got something at West Ham, shouldn't they? But um, just one of those days, didn't finish, type VAR call at the end. Um, so maybe they won't be that unhappy to have a, a short rest and uh, just depending on how the matches are fitted in with Man City and Newcastle now awaiting. So only four games for us to look at and that is Villa, Newcastle. Obviously no prediction, no game. But get, get your thoughts in on any matters of Villa in the comments and um, what this means for them going forward. Does it mean a lot? Does it help a little bit with, with Barkley? I don't know. You let me know in the comments. Big one there. Chelsea versus Leeds on um, Saturday night. I'm really looking forward to the watch along. Not only is it a classic English football fixture, obviously one of the famous FA Cup finals and FA Cup final replays in the early um, 1970s, but it's Lampard and Bielsa, which is a narrative that um, was stoked up during the 18-19 um, season when obviously Lampard was manager of Derby, who faced Leeds um, in the playoffs. Um, but earlier in the season, I was there, I was at the game. It was a hell of a performance by Leeds. The Spygate issues with Bielsa watching others training. Um, Derby just, I guess, happened to be the ones that caught them didn't they? And um, then the game was played. Leeds won the game. Um, Frank wasn't happy. Bielsa apologised. Leeds got fined. Bielsa paid the fine. But Lampard did have the last laugh with that playoff semi-final win. Um, I was there again. Um, incredible night there. And of course, football banter being what it is. I don't play. And I always say about football banter... You can't win football banter. The only way to deal with it is if you want to not lose, don't play. And that's me. But football fans, first leg leads singing Stop Crying Frank Lampard. Second leg, Frank Lampard singing Stop Crying Frank Lampard after the win. So, um, bit, of a, bit of a grudge match, um, this one. Hopefully, it can be a, a good-natured, competitive sporting grudge where... Um, Bielsa, this this great manager um, against Lampard, who let's be honest, whatever you think of him, um, or you know, if you if you've got a lead slant on this, you might not like him, but you got to respect the guy for an incredible career, and I'm sure he'll love to um, you know come forward and have a managerial career anywhere near what um, Bielsa has done or be as well thought of as Bielsa. So um, yeah. Let's let's try and keep it uh, as a competitive sporting um, rivalry in the comments. There's no need for personal insults, is there? There is the league table on the right-hand side. Chelsea up in third. Leeds in 12th. Expectations different at the two clubs. Leeds, obviously, this season will want to stabilise, become competitive and continue their journey forward. Whereas Chelsea under Roman Abramovich expect to win trophies and be challenging at the top of the league. Slightly different for them at the moment, uh, with Lampard working in as a developing manager, and obviously with the huge success of Manchester City and Liverpool the last few years. The, the goalposts have moved slightly, but they do expect to win trophies, don't they? Whether it's the Premier League or not, who knows? Um, there are the last five games for each at the bottom. You can see Chelsea in really good form there with 11 points in five, and the two drawn games against Manchester United and Spurs. Uh, traditionally, Manchester United, a huge club, so uh, that is what it is. And Spurs are obviously up at the top of the league under Jose Mourinho. Three victories there, Newcastle, Sheffield United and Burnley. So some argument there that, yes, it's 11 points in five games. However, Chelsea would... Um, uh, it's a bit flat-track bully, isn't it? They would expect to win those games and... Um, Certainly a side like Leeds have been more competitive than those teams that they've beaten there this season. And in the other games, they're against competitive teams, Manchester United and, and Spurs. They've not won. So if I'm a Leeds fan looking at that, I'm, I'm positive looking despite the 11 points across the five games. Uh, for Leeds, they're two wins in the last five. Excellent wins as well. Um, signpost wins, in fact, at Everton and at Villa. I wonder, does this game fit into that category 
as well because the two games they've lost there, 4-1 at home to Leicester and at Palace, um, well, disappointing games. And in both instances, we outlined uh, teams that might play a slightly different way than Chelsea play. And importantly, uh, Arsenal, who Leeds had a really good performance against and just couldn't get past and hit the post of the crossbar three times in that game. And the other two wins, uh, Villa, Villa less so, but Everton. What I'm saying is playing Chelsea almost suits Leeds better than it suits them playing Palace or Leicester or indeed Arsenal with 10 men because they did sit in once Nicolas Pepe was red carded, didn't they? Uh, for Leeds, uh, injuries and stuff looking a lot better now. Um, the formation there against Everton, you can see up the top. Ailing, Cock, Cooper, Dallas. Leeds fans are pains to point out that Dallas and Alioski might have rotated. Fine, uh, don't get too exercised about it. Mesley and Gull. Obviously, Phillips starred against Everton. Brilliant uh, click. Rafinha got the goal. Harrison, again, we're talking rotation. But look, everyone has a starting position. We have to draw a formation somehow, don't we? With Pat Bamford up top. Um, on the bench there, they're looking, starting to look stronger now. Look, Costa on the bench and Rodrigo. pervader has been used um, a fair bit. Obviously, um, Lorente will be coming through as well. So the strength is improving. And um, I dare say Rodrigo is a first team player here. So um, looking at that 11, maybe the, the plan long term is you're going to end up with um, sort of Phillips sitting in front there, Rafinha in the team, Rodrigo in the team uh, with Harrison further back than is um, presented on that sofa score um, formation there. And um, Rodrigo in the team, which means Alioski um, ultimately not there long term. We'll see um, a few hints from some of you Leeds fans I've spoken to that say it might be Lorente and Cock long term in this team, which would be very ruthless to captain Liam Cooper. But we'll see. Uh, top level sport is ruthless. It absolutely is. And uh, you have the shirt. Do you keep the shirt or does someone else get it? That's normally um, down to performance and down to talent and ability and engagement and dedication. And uh, we'll find out uh, long term. But, and this is something that Leeds fans are going to have to accept, that more often than not, uh, a few of the players that got you there end up gradually stepping out. The great thing is that Meslier, who ultimately got them there coming in at the end of the season, he's going nowhere. Ailing looks fine. Dallas, he's, he's doing okay. He can't go forever. Um, White, obviously gone. Back to Brighton. Cooper, well, we'll see again. Phillips looks great. Click looks great. Harrison looks great. Rafinha is in now. So Costa, who knows? Bamford looks great. So we'll, we'll see how this team develops. But that's the game now, isn't it? Can you up the ante? We know the manager's good. We know the pattern of play's um, terrific. Can you add in some extra quality there to execute even better? That's what they're doing. However, speaking of quality, Jesus, uh, Chelsea have got some good players, haven't they? Mendy, uh, James, who we saw um, just amazing in the championship for Wigan, wasn't he? Chilwell, huge sign in England fullback. Thiago Silva, experienced, um, been everywhere, hasn't he? Zuma, Kante, just elite Premier League level uh, midfielder. Mount, who was there with Lampard, wasn't he? In the playoff games, throw that into the narrative as well. Um, Kovacic, Werner, Abraham, Ziyech. So, as much as I've outlined the fact that um, Leeds will prefer to play against the team that plays Chelsea's way, um, and there's some sense in that run of the last five games that uh, Chelsea have won 11 points, but in the difficult games... They haven't beaten Manchester United and, and, and Tottenham. With all of that being said, they've got a damn good first 11, haven't they? And a load of quality. So we do have to remember where Leeds have come from and where Chelsea have come from. There is a disparity there. That could ultimately win the game for Chelsea. We will find out. But look, Leeds have been so competitive this season. Um, my prediction, um, and I'm going to... 
you know, really put my dearly departed hat on here. I hope Leeds can get something from this and maybe they can get a draw um, on the basis of pattern of play and uh, Bielsa versus Lampard in that respect. Obviously, we, we know this and we have plenty of Leeds fans watch the channel. You know, if those Chelsea players turn up and play to their potential, they win the game. They're better players. But football is not predicated entirely on who's got the, who's got the best players, is it always? Um, it's pattern of play, it's management, it's strategy, it's playing the game state as it appears um, on the day. So I have my fingers crossed for a Leeds draw in this one with my dearly departed hat firmly placed on my head. Get your predictions in the comments. Okay, um, Manchester City versus Fulham. It's um, it's just good luck with that one, isn't it? And we've you know we've had the dearly departed teams go to Liverpool. I don't think we've had any go to Man City yet this season, have we? Leeds have played Man City at home, haven't they? But um, against Liverpool, obviously, look, Villa won seven two. Sheffield United with um, a couple of penalty shouts got close, and Leeds lost four three. So um, will it be a different story? when they come against Man City. They shouldn't be terrified, but on paper it does look terrifying, doesn't it? However, Fulham are out of the bottom three. Man City only in 11th. There is a game in hand. They haven't quite clicked yet, Manchester City, have they? Uh, for Fulham, though, what a great result at Leicester. Winning away at Leicester. Villa did it for the dearly departed as well. But Leicester are right up in the table. You can see they're in fourth spot. And Fulham went there like Villa did and got the victory. Remember, Leicester took... Our dearly departed Leeds to school, didn't they? With that 4-1 win um, on one of the watch-alongs. Um, lots of caveats I'm throwing and I'm avoiding the point now. Um, so Manchester City, let's look at the last five games there. Uh, drew at West Ham, beat Sheffield United, drew with Liverpool, lost to Spurs. But the last game they beat Burnley 5-0. Um, so... Read into that what you will in terms of those last five. For Fulham, well, um, the last five has seen three defeats, but it's seen two victories. That's sustainable um, safety form. That's six points every five games. Extrapolate that out, you get over 40 points. Um, keep it going and you'll be okay. Uh, so despite the fact that there's defeats in there, and you have to say, defeats all by one goal as well. Um 2-3 at home to Everton, 1-0 away at um, at West Ham. And remember, the missed penalty, should have drawn that game, shouldn't they, at West Ham? And a late goal for West Ham to boot. And 1-2, you can see they're at home to Palace. So they've been in all of the games. I know in the games against Palace and um, Everton, they did have two goal deficits and got it back. But the final score is the final score. And they've won um, games there in the last five against... Uh, West Brom, who are relegation rival. Uh, Leicester, who are much higher up in the division. And, well, I mean, this is Man City, where we've said for a while, are Liverpool and Man City just on their own in their own little league? They have been the last few seasons. Man City aren't there yet. Um, it could end up that they're the top two once again. We will find out what Jose and Brendan Rodgers and Frank Lampard and Oli Solskjaer and um, all the other protagonists at the top have to say about that. Um, Fulham have now settled on a team. And when I was speaking about Leeds I in the previous segment in this show, I was talking about the fact that players get bombed out that got you there. Um, it's a little bit more heartbreaking at Leeds where they were so good and it was the end of a two-year journey. Less so at Fulham because they were only in the championship for one year. And there was always a sense they never quite got to where they probably wanted to, even though they were promoted and Mitrovic bailed them out a fair few times and they looked unconvincing a lot and ended up playoff final extra time in the end to even get there. So, But it is some surprise when you now look at what they're doing across the back there. Ariola, Adrabio, Anderson, Einan, none of them were there last year. Robinson there. Um, Parker quite clever against um, Leicester there. You can see they put uh, Bobby Reid at right back. Um, Parker explained in his interview post-game that Reid was playing as a midfielder, but then tucking back around, everything shifts over and you do get the back five. So quite clever from Parker. And it always looks clever when you win. And a great win at Leicester, wasn't it? Uh, look, man, he's been brilliant. Loftus-Cheek, Reid and Guisa. Great assist for 
and Guisa for the goal. Um, Cavaliero up front. And you will notice, no Tom Kearney, no Alex Mitrovic in that starting eleven, And they won, so they probably won't start the next game. And if you told me that um, that Fulham team would would change, I would say, OK, fine. If you told me that Mitrovic and Kearney would not be in it um, 11 games in, I would have been very surprised. We'll see how much they're used as we go through the season. But maybe <clears throat> uh, Cavaliero gives you something different to Mitrovic. We'll see. He scored in the last game from the spot, didn't he? So away we go. And then we have to look at the Man City players. So last time out, Edison, Mendy, Diaz, Stones, Walker, Rodri, Gundogan, Torres, De Bruyne, Mares, Jesus, and then on the bench looks Sterling, Foden, Silva. I'll, I'll stop there because um, it's just an incredibly stacked squad. And, if, and of course, um, it doesn't really matter the, the squad. It matters what's on the pitch. And obviously, De Bruyne, one of the world's best um, is who Fulham are going to be facing and having to having to keep quiet in this game. Not to mention Mahrez, who got a hat-trick in the last game. Sterling could come back in. Foden is an England player. I think Aguero is working his way back. Wasn't on the bench in the last one. But, you know, he's um, uh, all-time Premier League great now, isn't he, Aguero as well? So, look, I don't think Fulham are going to get anything from this game. I think they'll set up the same way they did at Leicester. But I think this is a different challenge. Big picture for Fulham. Things are improving and they're moving forward. Will it be enough by the end of the season? We'll find out. But Fulham's season is not predicated on Manchester City away. It's predicated on games against West Brom, Sheffield United, Brighton, Crystal Palace, Newcastle, Burnley. You know, if you, if you can be scoring two points a game home and away against them, picking up 24 there and... Um, then throwing in some other stuff. That's how you stay up. Hey, you'll take points against Man City, but you might well not get them. And with that being said, I'm going to predict a victory for Kevin De Bruyne and Pep and Manchester City in this one, fairly predictably. Um, get your ideas in the comment. Next up, you can see there West Brom versus Palace. And it's Bilic against Hodgson. It's 15th against... 18th, Palace um, slipping down the table recently. They were in the top half not so long ago. Three defeats in the last four games. West Brom out, um, well, out of the bottom two. But they got the monkey off their back and they got the victory against um, Sheffield United in the watch long at the beginning of the week. I pause for a breath because it's... And all West Brom fans will admit this is it's not a sustainable victory. Sheffield United missed chance after chance in that game. But it's a victory. And can you go ahead and build on it and build more signs of sustainability? Which is what we've been looking for from West Brom all season. Uh, looking at the last five there. So Palace, well, there's wins against Fulham and Leeds, who um, worryingly are two dearly departed teams. And the two other promoted teams from last season, aren't they? So uh, we'll have um, <laughs> we'll have a think about that. But there are defeats there, and the defeats against Newcastle um, and Burnley and Wolves. Okay, Wolves may be different, but Newcastle and Burnley might likely be in the bottom half for a lot of the season. So um, that would be hope for West Brom and for the Baggies. Look, it was a draw at Brighton, um, which we did as a watch along. And then defeat at Fulham, Spurs and Manchester United. Spurs and Manchester United. But they got the win then against Sheffield United. OK, Sheffield United are bottom of the table and having a hopeless start, which we'll talk about when we come on to them in the next segment. But a win is a win. It wasn't very sustainable, but a win's a win. Can they go ahead and build on it now? There is what... Um, West Brom have come up with and very much like Scott Parker it's been at Fulham it's been a development from what was going on last year remember last year was predicated all on Dean Garner and Pereira playing in a three off the front with I don't know, Krivinovic or um, Matt Phillips or Callum Robinson but it was about those two players and them getting goals and Bilic tweaking in game and um, all of that good stuff and it's got to be different this season. And 
Uh, this is what he's come up with. He's now got Carlin Grant, and he's now got Conor Gallagher, and he's now got Branislav Ivanovic. Um, so they're added in to the team. That's football. Feels ruthless, but in they go. Um, he's got Callum Robinson full-time as well. Um, and it was a three at the back. Johnston, Bartley, Ivanovic, Ajay, Furlong and Townsend, wing-backs. Gallagher and Sawyers, that's been the same for a couple of games now. Is that staying put? He seems to have tried every uh, permutation centre midfield with Kravinovic, um, Livermore. Uh, we'll probably look on the bench and see um, even more names there. Uh, we don't, but I remember him trying all sorts of permutations there. It's Gallagher and Sawyers at the moment with Pereira playing, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure it was a 10 with a front two, but certainly... Grant as a striker and Pereira and Grant, uh, Pereira and, um, oh God, Robinson, excuse me, supporting in whatever way, um, you know, the, the game deems it. Are they both going to go wide, narrow? Are they both, you know, is Robinson going to go up front and Pereira tuck in? Is Pereira going to tuck in and Grant be up front? Robinson going to kind of pull to the right and try and overload it? Whatever they come up with in game. Bilic is good in game. He's managed a lot of years and at international Level, um, there's your Palace team there. Typical Roy Hodgson team there, isn't it? Nice and solid, but um, some quality in there that will punish you. Uh, Geiter, Van Arnholt, Cahill, Dan, Klein across the back. Eze getting some starts there now. Great news for us um, with our championship hats on. Townsend, Coyote, MacArthur, Schlup and Jordan Ayew was the last lineup. Look, the victory wasn't sustainable against Sheffield United. If they play against a Roy Hodgson team in the manner they did against um, the Blades, they'll probably lose. Um, so it needs to be a bit tighter. We know Palace will um, sit in, be stable, but they will punish and they will play the penalty area as well. They'll defend well in one and they'll be decisive in the other without necessarily having a mass deal of um possession. I remember in Eze's last visit to West Brom, remember our last game of the season, watch along, Eze scored that sensational goal for QPR at West Brom. Um, so he likes that ground. Um, look, can West Brom get the win? Possibly. I think a draw is a more realistic thing. And I guess they'd be happy if they're taking four points across two games, if you can then build that and roll it out. I'm just not sure... Um, I just think Hodgson will be too wily to be to be beaten. But, hey, I stand to be correct. I'm going to predict a draw in this one. West Brom versus um, Crystal Palace. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comments. And finally, Sheffield United versus Leicester. Oh, been so fun to talk about the Blades over the past few years, hasn't it? So let's try and get out of this three months of um, horror show that they've had and they're bottom of the league and they've only got one draw in 10 games. One point in 10 games, 0.1 points per game. That is horrible. Well, there could only be one scenario worse and that would be 0 points from 10 games, isn't it? Goodness me. Um, I don't know what's gone wrong. We argued mitigating factors in a lot of the early games and oh, should David Luiz have got sent off? Should John Egan have got sent off? Um, we've spoken about Jack O'Connell and Ender Stevens and that side of the pitch being um, different and not as productive as it has been. We've spoken about second season and uh, teams not being surprised and um, maybe some of the players that went on this great journey, are they starting to run out of steam now? Have they hit their ceiling and peaked last season and there's nowhere to go? We've spoken about all of these theories. What is true, they just need to get on now and get a win. They need to find a solution and it might have to be ruthless. Um, and I'm not talking about um, the great uh, job Chris Wilde has done coming to an end. Wilder might have to be ruthless now. Um, and he might have to, A, be ruthless to someone who got him to the dance, um, or he might have to be ruthless to someone he spent a ton of money on um, and just take him out of the team for a little while. We will see the last five games, I, I don't need to read it, five straight defeats, but some mitigating factors there because they did play Liverpool 
They did play Man City and Chelsea in those games. However, um, West Ham and then West Brom. Uh, West Ham is a trickier opponent. We've got to look at the West Brom game and say they probably should have won the game, let alone lose it. I think it's six big chances or five, something ludicrous like that. And just when the confidence is like that and you've got one point in 10 games, that's what it does to your finishing, I guess. Uh, for Leicester, back-to-back defeats. One against Liverpool, but one against Fulham last week. There's the hope, isn't it? But um, are Fulham in more confident mode, trending upwards a little bit than Sheffield United? Probably. Well, no, definitely they are. Um, in terms of the lineups, uh, Wilder again tries something different to solve the Jack O'Connell issue. It was Keane Bryan in the last game. He comes out. 63 into that one. And they did actually go to a back four. I mean, is that the thing now? Does does he rip up the magnificent three at the back, the 3-5-2 and the uh, marauding centre-backs that um, we all knew about two, three years ago and the uh, pundits and the journalists in the Premier League found out about last season? Um, does, does he tear it up? Does he go four at the back? Will it be Bulldog as a full-back? Um, Egan and Basham uh, with... Low or Stevens as a left back. He might have to tear it up and start again. I hope not, because it was so well practiced. And when it's executed, those overloads down the sides, damn hard to defend against. And if you do, it goes back into central midfield and into the box, or they switch the play and do it on the other side. There's a reason why they um, had that incredible promotion and then ninth place finish isn't there. Um, he's gone back to Fleck and Norwood with Berger in there. I personally am a fan of that. I think Fleck and Norwood got him to the dance. I think Berger, of all the expensive signings, is the best one, isn't it? So uh, in he goes. Um, it was Bulldog and Lowe at wing backs. If you can get Stevens back in there, that's a big help. Um, McBurney and Burke. This is where the trouble's been, hasn't it? Brewster, McGoldrick, there's Moussa. There's even Billy Sharp, isn't there, still around at Blades, the goal machine. There. Can they get a front two to click? And can they get the team to click against Leicester, who are fourth in the league? Jamie Vardy is obviously a, a Premier League great, we all know about. And he very much enjoyed scoring at Sheffield United last season, I remember. Didn't he? There's Barnes. There's um, Tielemans in central midfield. Um, they've got some very good players, Leicester, haven't they? Um, I really, really hope they can get the win. I really, really hope they can get something. Um, I don't want to predict Blades to win every week until they until they win as much as I as I want them to and as much as I don't want Chris Wilder's legacy to become a non-competitive relegation. But you know, sometimes that's how the that's how the story flows. And um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Hey, and that's a question for Chris Wilder. What what are you going to do? What's the solution? I guess. He sticks at it and sticks at it and hopes that the change comes. They were a ninth place side last season, so there's evidence that they can punch their way in the Premier League. Are they going to get three points from this one? Probably not. Um, I'll predict a draw with the hope that they can beat Leicester. Leicester are good, aren't they? But look, Fulham did it in the last game. Um, I'll predict a draw. Uh, you let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments, Sheffield United versus Leicester. And that is our four games. But there is my um, plea. Join me um, for lots of live stuff. Um, obviously, I'm filming this on Friday morning. I don't know why I said obviously there. You don't know that, do you? Um, it's pushing 10 o'clock on Friday morning here. But look, six broadcasts between now and the end of the weekend. Uh, there'll be the championship preview. That'll be at 1pm today. And then we'll be doing Barnsley and Bournemouth at 5.15. Saturday Superstream at 3pm. Were any of our games at 3pm on Saturday? I don't think there were, were they? Um, we'll be doing Chelsea versus Leeds as a watch-along with our dearly departed hats on on uh, Saturday night. Join me for that, 7.45 uh, championship review at 10 a.m. on Sunday, and then another dearly departed watch along: uh, Sheffield United versus Leicester on Sunday at 2 p.m. That's a 2:15 kickoff. So loads of good stuff. 
Hit that subscribe button if you're a dearly departed fan. Sheffield United, Villa, Leeds, West Brom, uh, Fulham. Uh, still covering the championship here. You might have to pick that stuff um, out. Although we do still get plenty of dearly parted fans come and watch the championship content as well. So hopefully something for everybody. But please hit that subscribe button. We are moving forward nicely towards sort of 13, uh, 13,400 is where is our next um, next target. So help me out and hit the subscribe button. Get your comments in on any of those games. Uh, I always say, uh, remember, the best comment is your own idea rather than a critique of my idea. But you're entitled to critique my idea. That's absolutely fine. Just do it in a reasoned, logical and polite way. And we'll keep this channel as a good place to come and, um, you know, talk about football and debate football on YouTube. Um, I want to avoid the screaming and shouting that we get on some other YouTube channels in the comments. So uh, don't be surprised if I do delete your comment if you're if you a jerk to everybody. Uh, and to me, indeed, that's not really what we're going for on the channel. But I do really want to get involved. And we've got a great group of subscribers, very knowledgeable, very passionate, and always get some good debate. Uh, don't always agree with me. That's great. That makes me smarter. If you can present other ideas and I decide that, oh, maybe you're right. That's great. So just get involved down in those comments down there. Thank you again. To Jay, Jay Coyle, our dearly departed sponsor, also known as Ben, couldn't bear to lose us. Um, and let's enjoy a really good dearly departed weekend. Shame the Villa Newcastle game went down, but, um, you know, COVID being what it is, I think we're close, guys. I think the light at the end of the tunnel is there. But remember, Saturday Super Stream, then Chelsea Leeds, Saturday night, join us for that. Sheffield United, Leicester, and then the dearly departed review, I think. Um, let me figure this out, will be, I think I'll do it live. It will be uh, Monday, um, or will I? Yeah, I will. I'll do it live, Monday at 1. So come and join me for that. And with all of that being said, I will say thank you for watching, and it is over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to see more videos from this channel. Hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload. Ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go watch another video.